Next up, we have Mel. Hi, I'm from the Teaching Open Source Community. We are a group of educators and open source community members, and our mission is bringing the open source way in education. And today, I want to talk to you about why being lost is awesome. <laughs> All right, so I'm Mel. And I come with this with two hats. The first one is I've been teaching for about 10 years, but I've also been hacking on open source projects for about five years. And so I come through teaching open source from both sides, education and the open source side of the house. And today I'm going to talk about not just using free software and things with Creative Commons licenses, although those are awesome. I want to talk about practicing the open source way and bringing the culture of open source projects in the classroom. Because we can have free software, we can have free textbooks, and our classrooms will still look like this. So what we want to do is bring the culture in there because we think that kind of culture is going to benefit our students. As for exactly how it's going to benefit our students, I had to write a paper recently, so I'm going to throw some buzzwords on the screen for you now. Uh, uh, and these don't actually mean anything outside of context. So uh, we're going to launch into a couple of stories. And stories, stories, stories. Yes, Holly Earth, Massachusetts, brought her senior student to a GNOME hackathon. A couple months later, when they went in for job interviews, they were talking about, oh, here's my code on a public site. I was hacking shoulder to shoulder with senior developers, and that's all their employers wanted to know. Uh, Steve Jacobs, Rochester, has his students do design reviews on public chat rooms, and he has people from Europe, from Latin America coming in saying, how can we test your your games with kids in Peru. And then there was the college application letter that started out with, well, my project uh, has been downloaded about 10,000 times and it's used to teach, for teacher training in the developing world. And I graduate from high school in six months and I'd really like to go to your college. <laughs> so like, so the, these people are amazing not because they, are, became, they became amazing through working in open community. A lot of people are intimidated and they think, oh, I'm not good enough. Um, but there's always a way you can be helpful because we've had first graders' classes submitting bug reports, so you guys all have no excuse whatsoever. <laughs> right. So how do you do this? The first one is not picking a project. It's auditioning for community responsiveness. You're trying to see, are they friendly? Are they helpful? Are they responsive? Are they the kind of mentors that my students need? That's the first step is to find the people. After you find the people, find out how to keep in touch with the people because these communities are very improvisational. They change quickly. And so your service has to flex along with that so you can take advantage of the opportunities that come up. Plan to improvise. After you do that, you've got the people, you have the way to listen to them, and then as you overhear these conversations, things you can do are going to come up. When you find that out, just do it. Don't ask for permission, just do it. And now, I'm not trying to make this sound easy. It's simple, but it's very difficult because this culture, the open source culture, is very different from the way we're used to working in academia. But if you can get that to happen, then your students are going to be working the way the most successful contributors to these communities operate which is having the mindset of being productively lost. I'm in a big field, a very complex thing that's bigger than myself, but I can still find a way to make myself useful. And that's the sort of model for lifelong learning that we want. And so we go back to what the open source way is, right? Very different from academic culture. And it's important to understand that so you're not surprised and frustrated by it. So for instance, academia, very, very heavily scaffolded, right? When you walk in the door on the first day of school, you know what classes you're required to take, and you know about how long it's going to take you to get there, but you're not sure what you're going to do when you graduate. In contrast, open source project, you're in there to solve a problem, scratch a specific itch. You know where you're going, but you don't know exactly how long it's going to take to get there or what you're going to do along the way. So these are very complementary cultures, and it's really interesting because this is an opportunity to think two different ways at the same time, to see two different worlds at the same time and become more aware of how you yourself operate. <laughs> so, so, as a novice in open source world and an expert in the teaching world, the most valuable contribution you can often make is to teach these communities how to teach the newcomers. That's a very valuable contribution. Beginner's mind is a great skill. And there's a bunch of us that have been doing this in our own classes for several years now. We love getting people started. The Professor's Open Source Summer Experience or Posse workshop we do every summer to help new people get on board. We have a mailing list. Um, we show up at conferences like this and hang out. And if you want to find out more, uh, slides are up on that link. 
link. We hang out at the first one, and you can also email me. Thank you. Thank you.